reconstruct barricades to keep police out, police construction, contracting companies. You hear gunshots all the time because there's a police firing range in this. Yeah, you can hear those shots right there. Occupying this forest is how activists are resisting the construction of a $90 million state-of-the-art police training center protesters call Cop City. The facility will be developed on one of the largest green spaces in Southeast Atlanta, which has a history of oppression. All of it, it will be clear cut. They cannot wait. They just want to go in and bulldoze everything and then write the history the way, the way that they want to write it. The fate of the forest is up in the air as the police and forest defenders both refuse to back down. Uh, those people, uh, to me, through their acts, are actually domestic terrorists. Major corporations are pouring millions into this project, financially pressuring politicians to build Cop City. Why did you vote to approve this facility? Surrounding neighborhoods that are more than 75% black say their concerns have been silenced. Our opinion doesn't matter. It doesn't count. It's disrespect. And that's what folks who live here ought to be just enraged about. I still get anxious when I'm like coming down. This forest defender who goes by Fruit Bat has been living in trees for the past six months. You know, the banner says stop destroying Earth. The great thing also is that you don't have to destroy the tree to live in it. These forest defenders are a coalition of activists operating without a centralized leadership. It makes me feel like I'm part of something greater than myself. Fruit Bat is using a pseudonym because he's afraid of getting tracked and punished by authorities. The police, FBI, and other agencies are currently investigating the movement against Cop City. You know, the SWAT team has come through here before and arrested people. Several protesters were arrested during a police raid after a confrontation in which activists allegedly threw Molotov cocktails at officers. Forest defenders say authorities have continued to destroy tree houses during raids. Sort of a main gallery. As we toured the forest, we heard gunshots for hours. You can hear the gun firing. That's coming from a police firing range that already exists nearby. The plan is to expand that into an 85-acre campus. That's as big as nearly 64 football fields put together. The facility would be one of the biggest in the U.S. As you can see here in a video plan provided by the Atlanta Police Foundation, among the training features will be a burn tower for firefighters, a shooting range, and a mock village, including a school and residential homes. But residents who live nearby say they were blindsided by the city's plan to expand the massive police facility. This happened literally in my backyard. No, no one has reached out to me. I do see when they ask for votes. I do see that. Chenard owns a tow truck business near the proposed facility and lives in a neighborhood that is more than 76% black. You can head to the backyard. The forest is literally probably about um, less than a mile. Police academy is kind of like over there where they train at, so. The existing gun range already disturbs his day-to-day -day life. Once the dogs hear fireworks, gunshots, they go to, you know, having all kind of issues, running away. I'm not sure if they're trying to force us out of the community. Uh, and just take over the whole community overall. Uh, but that's what it looked like the way we, the, the, the path we headed down. Atlanta's proposal to construct the police facility here speaks to the land's painful history. The site was a prison farm until 1995. Prisoners there were subjected to harsh punishments and slave conditions, including poor sanitation, nutrition, and overcrowding. Some critics say claims of unmarked graves have not yet been properly investigated. Before that, the land is thought to have been a plantation that enslaved at least 19 people. It was originally stolen from the Muscogee, who lived there until the U.S. government forcefully displaced them to Oklahoma. Today, both activists and tribal members have reclaimed the indigenous name as Willani People's Park. Local advocates have long called for the area to be preserved as a historical site. Because they just can't wait. They cannot wait. They just want to go in and bulldoze everything and then write the history the way, the way that they want to write it and be done with it. They, they haven't even done proper, you know, ecological surveys yet. But Cop City isn't the only facility that the residents have opposed. Around the forest is a Hollywood studio, sanitation center, juvenile prison, and asphalt and trucking factories. So 
that's key road landfill. Nobody wants to in, to address the the environmental injustice of this. Those issues have never been vetted. The facilities have severely polluted Entrenchment Creek, which flows downstream to the South River. Jacqueline Eccles is trying to prevent the construction of Cop City from an environmental perspective. When we were here about a month and a half ago, uh, we we pulled uh, 100 tires out of the river and 40 or 50 bags of trash. When you look at the rivers, uh, the creeks, none of them meet water quality standards. And the cheapest way to improve water quality is to protect the green space. In a 2017 report by the city's planning department, the South River Forest was designated one of Atlanta's four major lungs. Now, the city is walking back on its vision to conserve the forest. To just turn around and have just disrespect the community, because, you know, it's, it's not, they, they never cared about the river, so we, we can accept that. But you're disrespecting the people who live in South Atlanta, and that's what folks who live here ought to be just enraged about. Some neighborhoods around the forest are more than 90% black and are low income with health challenges such as asthma. Getting rid of the green space will also leave them vulnerable to impacts like stormwater flooding. And it's not like you can create a situation to moderate the impacts. You can't. Now keep in mind, during the few times the public did voice their concerns, the overwhelming majority expressed opposition. Me as a black woman living in that's no place for me if we got a prop city going on. In fact, one hearing in September 2021 lasted for 17 hours, where around 70% of comments were against Cop City. Regardless, city council passed the plan in a 10 to 4 vote. What is going on with the city? Ordinarily, you would have a city who has control over the police. In this case, the police have a control over the city. So why did council members approve this facility? It's important to understand the Police Foundation in Atlanta. It's considered one of the most powerful police foundations in the country. For instance, when the mayor was elected, the CEO of the foundation served on his transition committee. Among those sitting on its board are leaders of corporations like UPS, Wells Fargo, Chick-fil-A, Home Depot, and Delta Airlines. The APF raises investments to finance police projects like Cop City. Of the $90 million needed to build the facility, $60 million will be funded by the foundation's corporate donors. The remaining $30 million will likely be paid by taxpayers. Well before the council voted on the facility, the police foundation had been lobbying council members. And the cost? The city leased the land to the foundation for just $10 per year for the next 50 years. Two of the council members who approved the plan agreed to sit down for an interview. Why did you vote to approve this facility? It's going to be a big recruiting tool. We have an, a duty, I think, and an obligation to provide our employees with the best in class of everything. But you also have an obligation to listen to what the community is saying, right? Do you feel like you've done that? Yes, I feel that I've done that. I'm a citywide representative. I move around the city <laughs> constantly. There were multiple chances for the public to speak. I've never been to a neighborhood planning unit meeting or a neighborhood meeting. Uh, where I have been told, we don't want this. So why here? One, it isn't what I see as a quote-unquote forest, especially not an old-growth forest. Uh, if you go out to the, to the uh, land, which I've been to many times, um, there's a lot of invasive species. But those who frequent the park daily say it's brought unique value to the neighborhood. So to them, it may not be a forest, but to somebody else, it does mean something. It's a saying it's true, one man's junk is another man's treasure. But these, these are the same individuals don't even live in the community. They don't live in the community. They don't care what they care. They don't care at all. These same city councilmen, would you allow it in your community? Would you allow this to take place in your community? Would you allow a landfill to be built in your community? Would you allow a police uh, uh, academy of this magnitude to be built in your community? The city is determined to proceed with building Cop City. Meanwhile, forest defenders have demolished equipment that they say attempted to destroy the forest. It's like become kind of a relic of significant, just to show, you know, kind of what happens if people want to come and destroy the forest. It just shows that we're not going to cooperate with the police or talk to the police. It's why not everyone agrees with the way defenders have been resisting. Some of them have embraced militant tactics vandalizing police and private contractor vehicles. 
other critics say they do not represent the communities living in Southeast Atlanta. Okay, we, we don't see eye to eye on everything, but we are here trying to defend the forest. The city spokesperson told AJ Plus the current facilities for officers is inadequate and that the new campus is necessary to give officers, quote, up-to-date urban training. Uh, we have gangs, etc. We have to be, at the very least, at that level, if not above it. Less than three weeks after the police killing of George Floyd, an Atlanta officer fatally shot Rayshard Brooks in the parking lot of a Wendy's. His death reverberated nationwide calls to defund the police, eventually resulting in the burning of the restaurant and the resignation of the city's police chief. But the city's response afterward was to increase police funding to improve officers' morale. Atlanta is one of the most surveilled cities in the U.S. with extensive technology financed by the Police Foundation. Our neighborhoods are essentially occupied by police. Organizers in majority black neighborhoods have been looking for internal solutions to combat violence such as de-escalation tactics. Community Movement Builders says the most pressing issues affecting residents are actually food insecurity and homelessness. Atlanta is you know, known for being a black mecca is known for having a lot of black politicians. But a lot of times those decisions that they make are not in the interests of the black masses here who, that are overwhelmingly poor and working class, but rather in the interests of their funders. The Police Foundation has said it's incorporated public opinion by promising 265 acres as green space and that it will also invest in trails for the public. Let me put it this way. Whoever thought of the, the notion that you can create a park-like environment next to a police training facility. You can go out and walk along the trail and, and just hear the gunfire go off. I mean, it's almost like that's what you're used to anyway, right? So we just bring it in home kind of thing, <laughs> you know? The Police Foundation says it will move forward with the construction and open by the end of 2023. But families and schools are refusing to let that define the future. Stop the city! Stop the city! Stop the city! They're hoping increased awareness will stop the construction. Don't cut down the tree. This forest is important for me because it reflects what is happening worldwide now. You know, even though we have uh, an urgency and climate emergency, the rich people of this world, you know keeps extracting and keep making themselves richer and richer. Not all protesters we spoke to were anti-police. Some were hopeful officers could receive better training to deal with non-violent cases involving mental health issues. I'm all for the cops training centers. Do it, because the cops need to be trained, but not at the risk of cutting down the forest. But they collectively agree they're done letting the city sideline their voices. This fight is not a fight about what City Hall is going to do. This is a fight about what you and I are going to do. City Hall doesn't have the last word on this fight. We have the last word on this fight. Back on the front lines of the movement, forest defenders hope to delay construction by nurturing a communal space. We call this the water buffalo. This is what we use to store water. People are supporting the movement with water and food donations. From all angles of resistance, people living both in and around the forest are determined to embrace the green space as the anchor of community. I've just had so many great experiences in those woods. At least these people are out there enjoying it right now. We're envisioning a society that we want in the future. And the only way to get there is to envision it, to name it, to show it, and to gather people who believe in that vision. You know, the nature, the preserve, the, the wildlife, all that kind of good stuff they have brought to this community. And now you're saying, hey, we're just going to take it away? Come on, that's not right. That's not right by no means. Thank you.